So I'm doing my last little bit of maintenance here on this 1990 Kawasaki EX500. And it wasn't part of my original plans, but after reading a whole bunch about it, I've decided I'm gonna upgrade or swap the OEM flywheel with an RM Stator flywheel replacement. And the reason is, is that everything I'm reading says this thing is a ticking time bomb and that the epoxy that was used to adhere the magnets to the flywheel, they end up letting go. And then you've got magnets kicking around and the results can be kind of catastrophic. And this was an issue that plagued these first generation bikes, but no, they no longer plagued the generations after it in that they did them differently. So I needed to get some special tools to do this and I'm kind of regretting even doing it at all. Cause I mean, it's lasted this long. It's lasted almost 31 years. Why go and change it now? And I've discovered some things, but I didn't need to buy a strap wrench. This is the RM Stator flywheel here. This is ultimately what I want to be putting on instead. And you can see how different it is and how the magnets are encapsulated inside of it. Uh, I needed a, I bought the kit that came with a gasket and also a flywheel puller. And I'm not very thrilled with the flywheel puller that came with this, uh, mainly because the bolt it came with is not long enough to remove the flywheel from a 1990 EXE, EX500. I had to go grab a slightly longer one. And what also happened is that as I was popping off the flywheel, this, which has the same head as this, ended up damaging the initial rods. And because it is a left-handed thread, I needed to go buy a left-handed thread tap to actually clean up the threads inside of it. So the big thing is that why you need a strap wrench on this, and I just got a cheap one. I also bought a flywheel and clutch holder, which this will not work on here. Um, I need to come over here, hold the flywheel steady, and then this is a left-handed thread bolt. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Normally you'd pull this thing off going left. You're going to go right. Don't go backwards or else you run a lot of risk of damaging the thing. So before I even got there, I removed the lower fairing and then I drained the oil and I had to remove the 30 year old gasket from here. Well, because pulling off so much of the gasket and the, how I do it, is I'll take a, a plastic blade and then a Dremel and go around and clean it up. These kind of disintegrate and throw stuff all over. So I knew I didn't want any of that getting into the engine. So before I even did that, I pulled the stator out completely. And then this piece had been completely destroyed by a leaky fuel petcock and the paint was destroyed on it. So I ended up painting that and this piece with Rust-Oleum and then Spraymax 2K Clear over the top of it. So what I would do to get this off, I don't want to be going left, I want to be going right, and I would hold it with the strap wrench so it doesn't move. Now I have this all loose, so it's not gonna be a whole lot going on, but it would come out that way. This thing is torqued down to 51 pounds later, so I'll need the strap wrench again. So the bolt that's holding the flywheel comes off. And then the fly, oh, okay, well, the flywheel, I have it all loose on here. Uh, and the starter clutch just all falls apart. So when you go to remove this flywheel, it won't be loose on here. In fact, it'll be very stuck. So with the flywheel tool, this is right hand thread. And one of the reasons I don't like this is because the flats on it are really terrible. If you're putting a lot of, a lot of pressure on it, 17 flats on there and then the bolt itself is a 19. And what you'll do is thread this thing all the way in, push it in, you'll hold this with the 17, thread in the 19, and then it'll pop off. The issue is that it can damage those inside threads. So what I learned I probably should have done is use some heat and I also should have gone around and light tapped it with a soft hammer. So you'd pop that thing off. And there's a lot better videos that show you how to do that. I think this is still on loose enough, yeah, that I can pull it off. And this will come off with the starter clutch on the back. There's a Woodruff key here, and then there looks like there's a thrust washer here. Those can stay on, just make sure that doesn't go missing. So here is the OEM 
flywheel and then from the starter clutch these pieces this is just held in by a spring these can fall out as you saw earlier pretty easily so what I'm gonna do is I need to move the starter clutch over to this one and it takes three six millimeter allens to do so and those are up top here and these things are torqued down pretty darn good they were pretty hard to get out I've got them loose now not even that loose but they will get torqued back down to what it says is the starter clutch mounting bolts or sorry the starter clutch bolts is 25 foot pounds which is not insignificant so let me get these out I'm gonna weigh this flywheel versus the new one and the new one actually weighs more so there'll be some power losses involved with this but hopefully it means I'm not gonna be throwing the magnets so now we have the starter clutch off here we can check the weight of the OEM flywheel and that is 1265 grams and the one we'll be putting on the RM stator the RM stator 13550-1 is 1396 grams so it's a good bit more so 13 1396 versus what was it 1265 I mean it's like 130 grams more so it's quite a bit more what I need to do is transfer this starter clutch and I'll just show you how one of these falls out it's just spring loaded this metal piece will fall out here then there's a spring and the little pusher so to get that thing back in I've just been using a screwdriver to position it do it like that uh, as I mentioned these need to get to torqued down to 25 foot-pounds though I think I'm probably gonna take a couple off of that because the manual also says to use some removable thread locker on it reusing the six millimeter bolts here and then I'm gonna go into there to talk about what happened with the bolt and why this has taken me so much longer I went to go thread the left-handed thread 14 back in and no matter what I did I could not get it started and it was just because using that flywheel puller tool had just damaged just a little bit of the inside thread so none of my tap and die tools would work because I didn't have anything left hand threaded so I had to wait until this came in I just cleaned up that initial part and now this thing will thread in just fine but put the project on hold for a while so it's one of those things you're thinking you're gonna do it in like two hours and everything goes well you probably could but if you really want to be totally prepared you might want to have one of these to clean it up and then I didn't buy a die but this could actually use with some cleaning up as well on the bottom but there's just a ton more thread that's holding it so I'm not not too worried about it so I'm gonna get that starter clutch onto here and then we will be cooking ah oh, shit before I do that it did say there's one thing it said to take a measurement on one thing let's see if I can line it up this is gonna hurt me because it's magnets okay the RM stator comes with no instructions of any use at all the one thing it said is you want to check the measurement somewhere and it doesn't want more than ten thousandths I believe the measurement it wants is between the magnet here and the pickups here as it's spinning I guess this is actually another place where you need that strap wrench is uh, tightening down the starter clutch bolts so it says 25 foot-pounds I use the thread locker so I don't know if I want to go that whole way 22 is an unlucky number let's see if we can get 23s oh shit I just got them all to 20 without an issue three Whew, okay now that's on there all right so the flywheel can go back on Woodruff key is there I haven't found a great way to do this yet outside of doing some jiggling there okay I had to twist it a bit 
It's because of how the starter clutch engages. Okay. So it'll spin that way, but it won't spin that way. All right. And this is why you can't tighten it to 51 foot-pounds without a strap wrench, because it'll just spin. This will be hard to keep the thing from spinning, but we'll try. Okay. <laughs> there. 51. Button all uh, button it all up back together. Uh, I guess yeah, to pull this off, you do need to unplug these two. So then this, I'm actually kind of just curious how this looks on here cuz I haven't seen oh. That's going to look so much better than it did before cuz it was all just a horror show of horrible paint. Yeah, anyway, uh, that's me trying to do a flywheel change on a 1990 EXE 500. Uh, you watch far. Thanks for watching. All right, real quick, just filled it up with oil. I don't like finishing up one of these videos without uh, proving that it's running, so it's running. I'll have to uh, get the multimeter out to make sure everything's charging and whatnot, but so far, so good.